Welcome to The Naomi Show. Well, I'm Skyping with John Aiken today. Hi, John. How are you going? Good to be here, Naomi. <laughs> Good to see you. Now, look, this is an issue that a lot of women have brought up on the site and to me personally as well, and that is feeling taken for granted in their relationships by their partner. And it's, it covers everything from where their partner used to remember birthdays, remember anniversaries, do nice little sort of romantic things, everything's gone they forget everything but they can always remember to organize a golf game or organize a card game or organize to go and see the boys on a weekend so what's happening there it seems to be very common and there's a lot of women out there who are really frustrated by it yeah and certainly as a psychologist in private practice i see lots of uh women that will come in and talk to me about this very issue. They say, you know, I've been telling my husband to do these things for years and years, whether it's taking the trash out or cleaning the dishes away uh, or unloading the dishwasher, you know, vacuuming, whatever it is, and yet they don't do it. Now, what's going on here is essentially there's a power battle. And unfortunately, guys are not particularly good at receiving instructions. In fact, they're very bad at it. Uh, they don't like orders. They don't like reminders. Because, uh, I mean, at the end of the day, very sensitive about uh, being controlled or being changed. And so the problem with this is that... That sounds very you... childish, John. I'm sorry. Oh, absolutely, <laughs> absolutely. And, you know, I can put my hand up as well when my wife says, you know, John, can you do this? Immediately I think, ah, oh, I'm being controlled here. What's going on? <laughs> but, of course, we're not. But the problem with that is that when you get in that power battle, that, that, that uh, digging into the toes then you don't get things done. Mm. And so what I've found is working over the years with this uh, situation, that you've actually got to create an urge in the guy to want to come on board and do that. Now, I'm not saying that you're surrendering here and basically giving over. What I'm saying is you're using a tactic to disarm the guy and his defensiveness. So what I mean by that, that... How do you do that? <laughs> what, what, what I mean by that is what you do is you, say, you start saying yes to his suggestions. You start uh, in, uh, giving him time for independence. So it might be the golf game or catching up with a friend separately from you. You start uh, essentially uh, listening to him but not fixing any of his problems, uh, complimenting him and basically getting him to feel needed. Now, it all sounds like, well, you know, really that's just me giving over entirely. Not at all. What you're doing then is you're, that, you're starting to get him to create an urge to jump on board and do whatever it is that you're wanting him to do. So, for instance, Naomi, I'll have someone that says they'll never take the trash out. So I say, well, what do they like doing? And they might say, well, he likes um, me playing uh, classical music in the house, for instance. Or it might be that he, uh, he enjoys me wearing a certain perfume. And I never do those things because he never takes the trash out. So what I say is, well, start doing those things and see what he does. The and sure enough, what happens is they come back and they say, with this, with me starting to come on board with him, he's actually leapt on board. He's taking the trash out. I'm not having to ask him to do that. He's picking up the kids. He's now tidying up after himself. He's even unloaded the dishwasher. And so you're creating this urge in them to come on board and start doing the things that you want them to do it rather sounds, than giving them instructions. It sounds like magic, John, but... <laughs> Yeah, well, that's, that's right. Myself and a lot of uh, women that I know would be very sceptical of this. And I'll tell you why. Because there are so many times that women actually allow their husbands to do all of these things. They do go on the golf things and they do do their card nights and they go to the football and they catch up with their mates during the week, do all of those things and yet never organise to do anything like that with their wives, never, or their partners. This is the problem, is it? The, the fear, obviously, of a lot of women is that if they just go, okay, you do whatever you want, honey, yeah. um, that he'll go and do whatever he wants, yeah. take her even more for granted, and yeah. she's going to be left looking after the kids. He'll be out every night of the week doing what he wants. And what kind of a life is that? It's even worse That's, than, than and, and you've, getting you've something. You've summed it up beautifully there, Naomi. Everyone worries that if I, if I take on this approach and say yes and let him influence me, then basically he's going to take me for granted and walk all over me. Now, what I can say to people that are in that state is, you've tried the other way. 
Okay, You've tried okay. giving them instructions yeah. or reminding them or even gently saying, hey, this makes me feel really small when you don't pay attention to me. But unfortunately, they're a guy and they haven't got on board with it. It's gone over their head. And therefore, what they need to see is something entirely different, a new approach. And so what I say to people is the other way doesn't work. Give this a go. I know it's a leap of faith. But for 15 years, I've been using this technique with uh, women and guys that are particularly resistant. And what they say is that it works wonders. They drop their resistance. They say, gee, I love the fact that she's done that for me. And you know what? Without her even asking, I'm going to go and do this, this and this for her. It sounds like it's magic, but essentially you're getting them to do something for you without actually giving them a directive. And this is really important because the other way hasn't worked and, and you need to give them a different approach if you're going to get something different out of them. So what do you say to those people, and a lot of psychologists will say this, the thing about men is that you need to give them specific instructions. They need to know exactly what you want because they're not mind readers. So yeah. how do you tell them what you want? So what do you do? Can you go to the, at the start of this whole process perhaps and say, now, these are things I want, <laughs> yeah. and then yeah. take your foot off the gas? Is that a plan? Would that be possible? Well, you see, the thing about it is we're, we're, we're not dealing with every guy. Some guys will get it. So when you're very specific, you give them a blueprint, you say, you know what, this makes me feel this way. When you do that, can mm -hmm. you do that differently? Some guys will go, sorry, honey, yes, absolutely, I'll do that differently. And they're the guys that give us a good name. Yes. But then there are those that go, don't you tell me what to do. Don't remind me. I'm not going to be controlled here. Yes. Well, they don't so actually, they don't specifically say that. They just go, yeah, yeah, right. Yeah, that's right. They withdraw. <laughs> they run away. Yeah. And so what you want to do is you want to say, if you're dealing with a guy like that, if you're with a guy that sounds like he's resisting and he's not paying any attention to any of the blueprints or specifics that you're giving him, then you try the different approach because you've told him many times what you want. He knows what you want. He's just not giving it to you because he feels like he's uh, in some way being corrected, controlled or directed. So it's not about getting across what you need. It's about getting across to him that he's needed, that you appreciate him, and that you let him lead. And then at that point, he's going to come on board and say, I know what she wants. She's been telling me for years. I'm going to do it. So that's when you use this technique. Only for the guys that basically are resisting your influence, digging their toes in, and essentially you're just banging your head against the wall and nothing's getting done. Okay, girls. Well, there you have it. That's right. I so remember these words, Naomi. <laughs> if you're with a guy and he's resisting, regardless how many times you've told him, think yes. I'm going to start saying yes. Yes to his suggestions. Yes to his uh, likes and preferences and see what happens. Let go. Create the urge in him and see what he does. I'm going to, I'm going to tell you now, he's likely, very likely, to jump on board and give you exactly what you're wanting. It feels like women have to do all the work yet again. <laughs> I hate well, to say this. But I, I will underline that not every guy is like feel this. That way, but some are. Okay, girls out there, if this is a problem that you're encountering with your partner, just give it a go. We would love to hear, I mean, both John and I would love to hear what happens. Absolutely. And, how, and you what, know what? When you do it and they come on board, just to remind yourself of how powerful this technique is, give them an instruction. And watch them retreat. Right. Because they immediately <laughs> dig their toes in and run away again. Just okay. to remind yourself of how you have to keep this going to make them feel appreciated so that you get what you want. Give it a go. We'd love to hear from you. Absolutely. Yeah, we really, we really would. Okay, thanks so much for that, John. I'll speak to you next time. Okay, great to talk to you. Your love life. Let's talk about it at naomishow.com.